In this video, we're going to cover spring inversion of control. Now, in the previous videos, we were working on our application. Um, however, we didn't get it to 100% uh, because we didn't have the support for the uh, configuration. And so uh, we need to make use of an object factory to kind of help us out with this uh, solution. And as I mentioned earlier, this is exactly what Spring comes into play. So Spring provides an object factory so we can have our application talk to Spring, say, hey, give me an object based on a configuration file or annotation. Uh, Spring will give you the appropriate implementation. So then your app is configurable and will have full support for that uh, based on our application requirements. So this looks pretty good. All right, so now we're into some real Spring stuff. So the Spring container, the primary functions of the Spring container is one, create and manage objects. That's your inversion of control. And then two, inject objects dependencies. And that's what they call dependency of injection. Now we'll actually cover all of this in the course. Um, I'll start off with inversion of control. And then in the following videos, we'll actually get into dependency injection. Uh, there's three ways of configuring the Spring container. One is by using an XML configuration file. The other is using Java annotations. And then finally, you can make use of Java source code. And we'll actually cover all of these approaches or all of these techniques in this course. So let's talk about the XML configuration file. Um, it's the original uh, configuration file that was used when Spring was first released. So it's a legacy, uh, but we'll still cover it because most legacy apps still use this. So if you're joining a Spring team or you're joining a company that has existing Spring applications, uh, it's a very uh, high likelihood that their applications still use XML config files. So we'll start off with that. Um, also, Java annotation is kind of like the latest fad, the latest fashion of making annotations. And also you can actually get rid of all config files and you can configure the container by using Java source code. But again, we're going to cover all of these techniques um, so you'll understand how each one of them works for your application. All right, so here's the spring development process. And as you know, I love to do lists. I love step-by-step -step approaches. So the first step is configuring your spring beans. The second step is creating a spring container. And then the third step is retrieving the beans from the container. And we'll actually cover all of this step-by-step. -step so you'll see how everything works and we'll do all of this from scratch. All right, so let's start with step one, configuring your spring beans. So in this example, I'm gonna make use of the XML configuration file. So here in the XML config file called application context.xml, um, I have a bean. I give the actual bean ID, my coach, and I give the class, and that's the fully qualified name of the Java class. So the ID, that's simply the ID that your Java application will use when they want to retrieve a bean from the Spring container. And again, class is the actual class or implementation uh, that you'll have for your application. Okay, so let's move to step two. So step two is creating a spring container. So in the spring world, a spring container is generally known as an application context. So that's the term that you'll see a lot uh, in spring documentation and in spring apps. So they have specialized implementations of it, one for reading XML from the class path, um, an annotation config, a web application context, and so on. And uh, we'll take a look at all of these uh, in this course. Alrighty, so creating the spring container. So in this example, I'm going to read an XML file that's on my class path. So I make use of this class path XML application context. And I construct this object and I pass in the actual name of the configuration file that I'm using for spring. So from step one, we had a file called application context.xml. You can use any name that you want as long as you're consistent between step one and step two as far as reading that configuration file. All right, so we have this container created. Now the next step is retrieving the beans from the container. So your application is simply going to talk to the spring container and say, hey, give me a coach object. And based on information in the configuration file, it'll give you an implementation of that given uh, interface. So here's step three as far as code. So the previous line, we already created our context. Now we retrieve the bean from the container. So here I say, context.getBean, and here I say my coach, comma, coach.class. 
So my coach relates to the actual bean ID that find in the configuration file. You have to make sure those match up with the exact same case. And then coach.class, that's the name of the actual interface that baseball coach implements. So here, coach.class is the interface. Baseball coach is the actual implementation. And then you assign it. And that's basically what you have to do for retrieving a bean from a spring container. Alrighty, so that's the coding here. Um, in the next video, we're actually going to move into Eclipse. Uh, we'll get our hands dirty and we'll actually write this code and we'll run it and then we'll actually see it in action. So, woohoo! Alright, so moving into Eclipse, we're going to go ahead and write some code. So, we'll make use of the existing project that we've had, uh, Spring Demo 1. And this is the same project that we had in the previous videos as far as making use of our coach, baseball coach, and track coach. So, again, the same project there. And what we want to do is make use of some code that we've downloaded for this course. So in previous videos, we gave you the links on how to download the uh, course files. Um, so once you download it, you'll get this uh, spring hibernate source code dot zip. You can extract it and then you'll get this folder. So again, look at the previous videos in the course as far as how to download uh, the actual course zip file. But anyways, once you have it, uh, you've ex unzipped it. There's this uh, spring hibernate source code. And we'll look in this directory here called spring core. Because what we want to do is actually copy a starter file that will help us out with the XML configurations. So I just moved down into Spring Demo 1, starter file, and there's a file there called applicationcontext.xml. It's just a basic starter file, basic shell. But let's go ahead and uh, copy this file. Just do a right click and choose copy. And let's move back over to Eclipse. And we want to place this in our source directory. All right, so highlight that source directory, do a right click, and then choose paste. Because what this will actually do is it'll paste the file and actually put it on our application's class path. So we can make use of our class path um, application context. So there's our file. Now if we just double click this file, um, our first step is configuring our sp spring beans. All right, so uh, this file has a lot of header information here for the XML namespaces, and that's what's required for uh, Spring to be able to process this file using its grammar and XML schema. Um, and now let's go ahead and define our bean. So we have this bean, and now I need to set up two attributes. Uh, the first attribute I need to set is ID equals, and this is basically our alias or what the app will use. I'll just call it my coach, and then I give class. Now I give the fully qualified class name uh, of our implementation. So in this case, I want the baseball coach. So I know the baseball coach is in com.love to code.spring demo. Oh, and actually, this is track coach. <laughs> Sorry. So com.love to code spring demo track coach. And that's our bean definition there. So that pretty much covers step one as far as configuring our spring beans. All right, so now let's go ahead and um, take a look at one other item. And now what I'm going to do is actually make use of a, um, a Java class. So I'm going to create a new class called Spring Hello App. So I'll select my uh, package here. I'll do a right click and I'll say New Class. And the actual name of the class here, I'll actually call it Hello Spring App. And also I'll check the box here at the bottom, public static void main, just so it'll give us a main method for our application. And then I'll just hit the finish button. Okay, great. So again, just like before, this gives us a very basic uh, Java class. Now, what I'd like to do is, you know, I always like to put in comments first before I start writing code. So the first thing I want to do here is load the spring configuration file. And then I actually want to go ahead and retrieve a bean from the spring container. Now that I have the bean, then I'll call methods on the bean or a method on the bean. And then finally, just to be uh, nice, I'll close uh, the actual application context. So that's my basic game plan here for uh, building our Hello Spring app. All right, so let me stretch out here at the bottom, give myself some white space. 
And uh, now let's go ahead and um, cover step two of creating a Spring container. So again, here we're going to use this class path XML application context. And I say new, and that's a really long name. So I'm just going to copy paste that name. <laughs> I'm taking a shortcut, uh, paste. And then in the constructor, I give the actual name of the config file. So just like in the previous example here, application context.xml. That's the name of our XML config file. Now it'll give us error messages as far as doing an import. So we simply hover over that um, error message and then we choose that first option of importing. So if you move up top, uh, Eclipse will help you out with importing that um, class from the appropriate package. So that's a nice little feature there. Okay, so now let's retrieve the bean from the container. So here I say context.getBean and I give my coach, that's the ID, comma coach.class. That's the actual name of the interface uh, for our implementation. So now I'm simply going to call methods on the bean. So I simply uh, use my system out print line trick, uh, sys out control space, and then I'll say uh, the coach.get daily workout. And now I simply go through and close the context by saying context.close just to be nice, just to clean up um, after ourselves. All right, so that's kind of the basic game plan here with this Hello Spring app. So the first thing we do is we load the Spring configuration file. Then we go through and retrieve the bean from the container. Then I call methods on that bean. And then finally, I close the context by doing my cleanup. And uh, that's the basic game plan. And that's kind of your first spring application right there. Woohoo! Now let's go ahead and try this out. Let's run it. So just do a right click, run as a Java application. And there we go. Booyah! Check the output. So here, um, look at some of the info messages. So it's loading XML bean definitions from your class path resource. That's our configuration file. Application context.xml. And then we called our sysout print line on the uh, get daily workout. And our track coach said, hey, we need you to run a hard 5K. So this looks really good. I'm kind of excited about this. I hope you are too. This is our first real spring application. And it actually works, which is cool. So again, there's the code up top. And then um, our messages being displayed there um, at the bottom. Reading the config file. Um, getting the bean from the container and then simply calling methods on that bean. And that gives us the desired output in our console window. Cool. So let me kind of switch back to our slides here for a second, because now we've kind of come full circle here. So now we have an app that meets the requirements. Um, our app is configurable based on that configuration file we just worked on. And also we can easily change the coach for another sport by simply putting in a different coach implementation. So um, I like to say uh, mission accomplished. And I like to say that we've met all of those requirements from our manager. <laughs> so, hey, boss, we got it all covered here. We're all done for the day. And uh, thanks to spring, um, our life is much easier. So good job here. Our first spring app, it's up, it's running, and uh, it's working. A lot of great spring stuff coming on later. But, hey, this is a good start. So give yourself a pat on the back. Job well done. All right, so we met the requirements, but our boss said, hmm, I'd like to see you test that out. Um, let's change the configuration file and let's, uh, let's put in a different implementation. They just want to make sure that the code actually works um, as advertised. <laughs> All right, no problem. So here, let me open up my Spring config file. Um, I'll move in here. Uh, right now it has a track coach that it's using, and I want to change this over to use baseball coach. All right, so I'll replace track coach with baseball coach. It's all configurable. And then once I have that set up as baseball coach, I simply save this file. And so once the file is saved, I move over to my um, my app again and I simply run it. No need to change the source code here because it's reading everything from the configuration file. So I just do a right click, choose run as and run it as a job application and booyaka, booyaka. <laughs> So now our baseball coach implementation is uh, running based on the information from the config file. Our baseball coach says, hey, spend 30 minutes on batting practice. So this is really good. So we met the requirements here. Our app's configurable. Simply change a config file. 
run it without modifying any source code, and it'll pick up the new implementation. So again, job well done. Drop the mic, and uh, you can go ahead and um, head home for the day because you accomplished a lot of great stuff here. All right, good job.